ready when you are, sir. Good evening, everybody. I'm here to cover uh, some information we have in reference to an in-custody death that we're still actively working. Uh, earlier this afternoon, we uh, gave information out that the female who had escaped from our custody had turned herself in. Um, we have some facts that surround that. Uh, her name is Deborah uh, Urkulano. She's a white female, 55 years old. And as you know, the public information also put out that she's been recovered. Around, uh, around four-ish this afternoon, she calls over to our CTC, our Community Transition Center, and reports to them that she would like to turn herself in. She actually made about three calls to them uh, trying to figure this out. We offered through the Community Transition Center to send a beat car to pick her up. She refused so and said that she would uh, find her own way here. So at around 4.30ish, a gold color car drops her off, uh, lets her out of the car. She reports to the corrections officers at that time she's not feeling all that well. She's had some uh, some leg pain and just generally doesn't feel all that well. They get a, uh, a wheelchair for her and take her up inside to, uh, to CC CTC. They have some medical folks come take a look at her. Uh, they release her from, from their care at that point in time. Uh, they're going to go serve this uh, rest warrant on uh, Ms. Arcolano and they'll do that over here at the back door of our records and ID section here at the police memorial building. So in route over here, just a short distance from CTC over here, uh, she tells the officer she's feeling worse. The officer gets on the radio, has Jacksonville Fire Rescue come and meet him here at the uh, back door of our records and ID section. They see her and make a decision to transport her from here. So they, they do so, they transport her to UFL. And uh, she arrives somewhere around 515 or so and they begin to take care of her and work on her. She gives a history to the fire folks and to the folks at the hospital that she's used heroin today during the day. And she's also gives history of being a meth user, being a cocaine user, being a heroin user, and also using a drug called Crocodile. And that's a homemade, um, homemade drug that's mixed with some over-the-counter things that I'm not gonna give a recipe to how to make this, this junk. But, uh, so she, she gives a history of this, and that is um, fairly fairly nasty stuff. And apparently when she uh, she took that thing, it, it did its thing and, and began to work on her. Uh, so they work on her at the hospital for some time. Um, her condition continues to worsen. And at 6.58 p.m., after working on her for some time, she expires and is pronounced dead at the hospital. We have uh, made contact with her family who's out of state in New Jersey told them uh, about what has happened to, uh, to their daughter, her daughter. Um, going back in, in time with this a little bit, on 3-24-16, she was arrested uh, by this agency for organized fraud, and she was placed into the work release program on June 16th, which was a Thursday. She uh, did not show up uh, back to work. Apparently, she had uh, had some other legal trouble that day with a potential shoplifting charge. And uh, as that was being looked into, she made a decision to, uh, to not go back to work and was uh, uh, a rest warrant issued the next day on the 17th for escape for her. And units have been working over the weekend to try to locate her when she, uh, she made that call and turned herself in this afternoon. Um, it's a very unfortunate, sad thing. It sounds like uh, you know, she had some responsibility in, in her, her lack of care for herself. Um, she, uh, according to family, did have a history of some heart issues as well. Uh, we'll know a little bit more tomorrow after the medical examiner uh, concludes an autopsy on her body and get an idea from that, which we can release, but I can take some questions. Francesca Emmerker from Channel 4. So this woman, as far as, I just want to get things clear as far as her being in JSO's custody, was she ever actually handcuffed or arrested uh, or touched at all by any officer? Yeah, uh, Francesca, the, when the officer took her from CTC and drove her uh, over here, he initially handcuffed her in the back of the car and again, this is a one or two minute ride from, from the back of there over here. When fire rescue showed, he immediately unhandcuffed her and let her get uh, treatment. There was, that was the only force, if you will, used on her was just, uh, just the handcuffing of her. She didn't resist at any point in time uh, from the time she turned herself in to the time that she left our custody into uh, fire rescue. She was, she was uh, not combative at the least. She was very, uh, very frank about her not feeling well and having some issues with her legs and issues walking. So, any other questions? And again, she was initially charged and wanted uh, for a shoplifting charge, right? Uh, she was. Uh, it was a fraud charge from fraud. back in uh, March. March twenty fourth okay. was that, 
And then on the 16th, when she initially did not return for work release, which is they'll let them out to go to work from, from CTC, apparently she had some run-in with the law at that point in time. She did not go back to work or come back to CTC at that point in time. All right. Cool. Thanks, Director. Thank you very much.